In over 70 years, the gaming industry has changed drastically in many different ways. One of the ways is in its music. Whether it be creation or implementation, the way music has been used in video games has changed from background noise to a selling point for some people. And in order to understand why, we must go back through gaming's history to understand how it's evolved. Since the 40s, video games have been used as training for artificial intelligence and for entertainment. One of the first games public consumption was a simple tennis game called Pong. Only having simple sounds of the ball hitting the racket, it sold 100,000 units. Three years after Pong was released, a game known as Gunfight was the first game to implement music. Gunfight was a game where two cowboys having a standoff. The first one to fire with the timer wins. When the other guy dies, this chime plays. This time, music is known as Chip Tune. Gunfight used a, a programmable sound generator to create its tune. Video games continue this trend of having simple sounds, like, uh, in, like heard in Pac Man, until the Atari 2600 in 1977. The fun is back! Oh, yes, sirree! It's the 2600 from Atari. The Atari 2600 has roughly 10 different tracks that loop in the background. These songs serve a pale in comparison to the Famicom soundtrack. In 1983, Nintendo released Famicom, which was then changed to Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES for short. The NES used FM synthesis. Yamaha has utilized this and is still found in devices today. The chip in the NES had a 5 channel system. A channel is just how a waveform can be used and what type it is. It used two pulse waves, a triangle wave, a noise wave, and a pre recorded line. Here's what each sounded like separately. The SNES used a different format and was released in 1991. Instead of 5 channels, this one had 8. It utilized an SSMP chip, a chip made by Nintendo using 64 kilobytes of static RAM access memory, SRAM for short, meaning it had 16 bits of output and reverberation effects. All songs, sound effects, and games during this time were programmed. The tech at the time was limited, however, sometimes the people were able to use this to their advantage. The song Aquatic Ambience, composed by Robin Beanlin for Donkey Kong Country, took 5 weeks to code live by line. The song that's playing in the background right now. Every sound is a pre-recorded sound, and every line was something like this. The first numbers were the sound select, next two were the pitch, two after that were the treble, and the last two were the effect used. Today, music in video games isn't all coded, it's recorded in the studio, creating an entirely new business. In the early 2000s, the soundtrack of video games were becoming more noted. Since the hardware was getting way more memory, they could just record an orchestrated piece and have it play in-game. The game Halo was, was one of the first games to apply this. Its astonishing soundtrack, even 19 years later, goes for $20 on Amazon. As the hardware improved, more games had even more complicated soundtracks. If a game would follow a certain style of time period, it would have a tone to its music. Other times, it would use older songs or match them for effect. Bioshock soundtrack is a great example of this. Its main theme is Beyond the Sea. Originally, originally written in 1945 in France, two years later, Jack Lawrence would dub it for American audiences. This is the version heard in the game, although redone for audio purposes. Beyond the Sea is a happy go lucky song in contrast with the gritty and dark themes of Bioshock. It fits well with its time period, making players feel more connected to the universe. These games are both known for their gameplay, not perfect games, but what makes these titles more memorable is their thrilling and fitting soundtracks. Fun well, fact, Bioshock's soundtrack was sold on the vinyl record, it was limited time only, but if you look hard enough, you can find people reselling it today for 35 bucks. During this time period, music composers in the gaming industry were paid considerably less than what is spent on music today. Most making around twenty to forty thousand in the early two thousands. Today, over they can make anywhere from thirty to seventy five thousand. The big name hires you can make up to one hundred and thirty thousand. Here's an example of how much money can be put into a game's music. The industry standard is two hundred dollars a minute of music. The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild has six and a half hours of music. Let's calculate that. Six and a half hours is 390 minutes, meaning that the composer made roughly $78,000. However, there were entire bands and orchestras that are paid to play the music, and they'll probably pay at least 300 grand for a minimum of the 239 songs that are in Breath of the Wild. An example of a game using its music as well as its visuals to create a new experience would be Cuphead. At least 2017, it had around seven years of development, and it really shows. Having a 30s style of cartoons is one way to set an aesthetic. However, they also created an original soundtrack to complement the music of the time period, enhancing the experience. Music in games today is something gamers enjoy and listen to. Some symphony bands recreate iconic music from different games and sell out. 
An example is the Metal Solid soundtrack. For a long period of time, these this was only really played in Japan, and playing video game soundtracks is still kind of odd today in America. However, in March 2018, almost 14 years after the game release, that changed the performance in America. Not only showing that the soundtrack can be sold as an album, but its performance in the Americas, making video game soundtracks even more profitable. In 70 years, we went from no music, to generating music, and then orchestrated masterpieces. And if that's not evolution, I don't know what is. So supreme